uh, group, and we actually sectioned off into two sections. We had kind of water and then uh, planting. Um, and the biggest issue with that, um, Zach's uh, cedar, <laughs> he has to drag inside. Um, and so the idea is that we would use, um, I guess, the width of two and make more of a kind of a tracking system. So instead of being pulled inside, it's being pulled on the actual track of the, um, of the crates. And it could be in two ways. The wheel could actually be like an actual, you know, um, U-shaped kind of thing, like a, a railroad uh, uh, thing to be pulled, or it could be a rubberized wheel um, where you just have like two pieces of metal hanging on each side that would allow it to be tracked. And so when they get to the lip, they can very easily cross over. If you have a, kind of a, a railway uh, wheel instead, and so you're kind of going within that track, um, there can be a divot within the wheel, so it's the same circumference as when it hits that kind of intersection that it will be able to uh, roll through that. There's an actual like little block, kind of rounded block that goes through, so it can kind of turn over that. Um, so it's kind of a multi-way. If, if he wants to spend money, um, you could also lay down PVC pipe to make a little bit of a smoother tracking system for it's actually going on. Um, and I mean, a lot of these units we were talking, you could code Arduino to even um, do kind of a solenoid mechanism that actually is pushing the seeds into the ground. Um, and you can try to, instead of doing a linear model, you can have it go in um, a more kind of spatially, like, uh, meaningful way as far as filling up all the different uh, areas that you want to see. Um, and a nice thing about this is you can take that off uh, because that's the secondary thing he has to do is he has to go back and put soil over. Um, and so you can use that tracking system and it's actually going to be easier to pull and just have it again turn out the soil the whole time. And the same thing for watering. You can do a watering technique doing the exact same method. Um, so it kind of hits a lot of different uh, answers, I guess, for all the different things he has to do. I guess ultimately what the, like the, the short term solution would be to change these wheels, expand them a little bit so that they run along, they run along the, the top of the boxes because then that's a consistent line. Yeah. Like every time I have to go down into a box and then come back out and come back down, I'm, I'm losing um, seed space, I'm, uh, plant, uh, seeds are planted at different depths which could uh, lead to inconsistent germination. Um, if it's if it's a smooth operation that that's kind of cutting out those those variables, um, but the the goal then would to maybe even develop a tool that would be uh, four foot wide. Um, and the other thing is that these are all the exact same size, right? So if we make something very precise and put a notch in a wheel that's meant to hit the edge of the box and then keep rolling, it's going to be that way every single time if those things are are lined up beside each other properly. Um, so the goal would be to eventually maybe develop a tool that was essentially four, four of these, you know, which is four foot wide, where we could, you know, uh, kind of lay seed, uh, cover up with, the come back through with a potting mix that would be laid over top of the seed, um, so disrupting the placement of that seed very little just by laying a, a fresh layer of soil over top of the troughs. And then um, maybe even have a piece of uh, perforated hose attached to it where we could then have a mister come through and just along a track, just just back and forth on the bed, be able to to lightly water those seeds. So um, it'd be it would cut out. Um, I mean, this already cuts out a lot of time, but it'll cut that time in half in terms of uh, what we spend like planting seeds. So. Oh, really cool.